So it's uh, Thursday, August 20th, and uh, looks like uh, I am in the mall uh, here in um, the beautiful Eastern Shore. And uh, you know where I live is so, is so rural that I have to drive 45 minutes to come to a mall or any kind of, you know, shopping area. You know, besides a grocery store or Walmart or something. So it's a family, kind of family day. Well, I had to work, so family afternoon, evening. Uh, we're going to see a movie. It's just uh, Vicky and Trenton, my stepson and I. I can never find a good reason to go to the mall. Which is why I'm sitting, I'm sitting right here. And I'm not out shopping. Because I, I don't like the mall. I'm not, even though I, I have to deal with people on a regular basis, I'm not really a people person. Not at all. I don't know how you guys she like that. It's so difficult. Match your shirt. Yeah. I know. That's why I did it, Steven. I was like, yeah. Is that the only reason why you did it? No, but I like, I thought they were cool. I saw them, I was like, ooh, because they were like on a rack hit. And I was like, yeah. That's nice. I always Look like how he ties shoes. That's not how you, you tie think, a darn shoe. I like Converse, but tell him that's not how you tie your shoes. It doesn't matter. He's always tied his shoes funky. Yeah. Heaven, hasn't he? Yeah. As I recall. I have. New shoes. It's Thursday, so these bastards will be open. It's not Sunday. <laughs> but I'm sure it's true though, right? Yeah. You know, on Sunday, it's the these day. guys, these guys lose money. I don't know what the hell's wrong with them. And then I mean, they lose extra clientele because they're like people are so mad at them about them being closed on Sunday. I get so sh mad. I do on a Sunday. It's and usually I want that on a Sunday. Oh, it's it's, it's like, oh, it's, uh, like a, it's, a, it's needing it's me. It's needing my neck. Yeah. I'm getting messed up. Oh. We're getting massage. A massage. Does this come with a happy ending? I hope so. <laughs> See what I did that kid? Yeah. He was a nice and innocent little boy. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. oh, God. You ruined him. You just ruined it. Well, it actually feels pretty good, but I know. weird convert. Uh, it hurts me. It's going out my ass. It's like here. eating it's my legs, and my it's like... <laughs> 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 Actually, it's, oh, I tell you, it hurts. It's right, it's right on my spot, though. Right, right on your spot. Right on my spot. <laughs> the cold muscle. Oh, that does feel good, though, baby. Steven, I told you, we can get 15 minutes for five bucks. It's better when you have like an Oriental person do it. <laughs> because you won't oh, get a happy oh, ending. Steven, I get the probing part of it. <laughs> I like that. Ah, that feels good. Just pretend it's just, it's like. A, yeah. Okay, so that was a nice massage. I'd never really had one like that before. So uh, now we're getting ready to go see a movie. I'm filming me, honey, not you. I already got your new kicks. These kids today, I swear. So we're gonna go see a movie called The Man from Uncle, which was based on a 1960s television show. What a spy affair. I'm gonna go see that. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, you know, I'll tell you how it's, how it is after I see it. So we're at the, uh, oh! Uh, not bad. So uh, we go to get some popcorn. I got a free popcorn and uh, wanted to get a bottle of water. Six dollars for a bottle of fucking Dasani. Now you tell me, who is the idiot here? Us, because we bought it. I know, that's what I'm saying. 
That looks pretty good, too. Bring your time. They're checking your bags when you walk in. It's not like you can bring your own water now. I know, right? I'd say, I'd say like, hell, you're going to get in my bag. That doesn't sound right, did it? <laughs> so I'm just walking and talking. Oh, yeah, it's Compto. Six All dollars. I see that is Vendor's cousin Compto. Compto? Yeah. Compto. Straight out of Compto. Hello. Uh, well, it's been a few days uh, since last we talked. Quite a few days, actually. This is Monday. It's uh, August, I want to say the 23rd, 24th. Actually, the 24th, I think. Uh, Monday, I'm heading to work. Yeah, yeah, you know, I just haven't been updating everybody lately because I just haven't had much really to, to say that I think would be interesting, you know? I, I don't want to bore anybody, and I don't want to post anything that's going to be boring to you. Uh, but I do want to get these videos out more than just once a week. I feel bad about that. So I'm going to try harder, I promise. Uh, so anyway, I did weigh myself today, this morning when I got up, and uh, I am at 3... All right, hang on. Let me make sure I get it right. Three, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 366. Yes, 366. Which really is not a hell of a lot of ch shit. Which really isn't a hell of a lot of change for me. Um, actually, it's no change since I weighed myself last week. Um, but I guess I am just grateful that I haven't gained any. Um, that's the important thing. I've kind of leveled off, I guess. But um, uh, I've just got to be a little more um, intentional with my um, with my dieting. I know that I I take my cheat nights very seriously, but maybe not. I just need to. You know, even though it's a cheat day, cheat night, I just need to remember that I'm still on a diet. Enjoy yourself, but don't enjoy yourself too much. So I'm gonna try to remember to do that. Anyway, uh, you know, things are good though, I think. Uh, I'm heading to work. I've got a uh, psychiatrist appointment today at 4.30. <sighs> I have to drive all the way down the county to go do that. Not looking forward to it at all. But I need to, uh, for no other reason than for my, my psychiatrist to say, okay, well, you're good for another 30 days, I'll give you another prescription for lithium. Which is, uh, apparently he doesn't like prescribing anything over 30 days. Pain in the ass, but I guess that's how he makes his money. Can't fault him for that. Monday morning, y'all. Okay, so I've uh, <coughs> just left work the day. I'm leaving just a little bit early than usual. Wasn't a whole lot to do. I gotta tell you, um, and I may have mentioned this in the last video, I, I have real, and I don't think it's imagined, but I've got kind of a paranoia right now about my job. Um, I I feel like, and this might just be me and my persecution complex, because trust me, I've got one. I'm, well, I assume I have one anyway. Um, I'm trying to move this around here, easier to drive. Uh, I have I have an idea that everybody's trying to get rid of me. <laughs> okay, probably not true. Um, there's nothing that's happened, nothing that's been said, nothing that's been done that would even make me to even imagine that to be true, but I still think it anyway. Um, I think ever since I got laid off from my first, you know, big, big job, <laughs> adult job, I used to be a bouncer in a club, um, should have stayed at that because I was making decent money then. And I was also, I'm a, I'm a night owl, so I probably would have just done better just to stay there it was when I was in college. But anyway, um, when I, when I got laid off from my job uh, running the newspaper, it did, it did a lot for my ego. It was right around 2008, you know, and uh, right when the economy just went to hell, and uh, corporate it's, uh, corporate thought that uh, just said, well, we don't need him because we've got other people with other jobs that could probably just fill in for him, and, you know, and we'll just eat up the, the loss of, uh, one, of one person. 
you know, it, it, it sucks. It, it's shitty. It sucks. Um, but that's life. You know, I've been working there for several years. I had just kind of, I guess, realized that, you know what, I could do this the rest of my life and be okay with it. I'm, I'm making, I'm not getting rich, but I'm making decent money. Um, I've got good, you know, health insurance, you know, living was good, <laughs> you know, and I enjoyed the, the fact that, you know, my, that my job wasn't, you know, <clears throat> uh, doing the same thing every day. So, I have a complex, man. I think that somebody's trying out to, out to get me. You know, um, the production off, uh, studio is pretty much my office. I don't have any other desk. You know, my nameplate's there, so it's my office. I'm crying out loud. But uh, there's another guy that works there, and he's the uh, operations manager, operations director. And... Uh, and so he will very often go into the production room and do production also. I handle about 90 to 95% of CTG's production. Well, there was a couple times last week where I had left some stuff um, in my production inbox. I had sent out uh, for a couple different voices for, for a spot I was working on. And when I came back, the spot was already done, produced, and, and, and was uh, approved. And I got a little shitty with the guy. I mean, I, I didn't get shitty with him, but I got... Uh, you know, I let him know that I wasn't very happy about that. You know, it's like, you know, I put on there, you know, on the production order, you know, Steve will will handle. <laughs> and uh, it's like, you know, don't don't come in my space and, you know, don't come in my space and mess my stuff up, man. You know, it's like, you know, you do your job, I'll do mine. And uh, I think his idea of self-importance is way overflated. Uh, he's a nice guy. I mean, we're friends, but uh, he's making my business his business. Sort of. Anyway, it's hard to, it's really hard to kind of articulate how I feel about it. Just to say, I'm sure everybody has, you know, anybody who's ever held a position in their life has had to at least come upon one of these situations once before and been kind of apprehensive about their position. I have no reason to think that I'm going to get cut, you know, I'll get fired, laid off, whatever. There's no reason for, for me to think that at all. And I've also got very much um, just an overriding sense of impending doom. I always just assume that things are going to turn out badly. Which is not a good way to be, and I don't like it, and trust me, if there was something I could do to remedy that, then I, then I would, but I, I don't know how. That's why, one of the reasons why I'm having, you know, going to see a therapist, um, because I just don't know what to do about it. I don't know how to handle it. I don't know why I have it. I just always think something bad is going to happen. I always think something, I mean, you know, I'm going to die relatively soon. I feel that way all the time. It's not a very comfortable feeling to have. Anyway, so I'm heading home now. Um, at 4.30, I have got a, uh, an appointment with my psychiatrist. Um, he's all the way down the county, so I've got to make that jaunt down the county. Just so he can tell me that, yeah, you still need your prescriptions. Here's another month's worth. It's a racket, I'm telling you, it's all a racket. <laughs> but a damn good one, and I wish I was in it. <laughs> so I'm just leaving now from uh, my uh, psychiatrist office. Um, got that lithium thing worked out. Where um, I think we got it worked out anyway. Anyway, you know, and uh, he just uh, kind of talked to me for a while, asked me how I'm doing. You know, and I, I feel like I, I feel like I, this this year I've been more open about my feelings, so much more than I used to be. I've gone from keeping everything to myself, you know, completely just bottled up, compartmentalized, all of my feelings. I've gone from that to sharing it with 
therapist, sharing it with a psychiatrist, sharing it with you. And, uh, it, and it, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a very good thing. I'm going too fast. I'm in a 45 mile an hour zone and it's strictly in forest. It's crazy. Um, but anyway, um, I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling okay about that. I explained to him my work situation or my work non-situation, I guess is the better way to put it, that uh, I'm feeling uh, like the wall's closing in, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like, you know, I'm trying to get nudged out of my, my job, even though there's really no reason for me to think that. You know, I've been thinking also about, you know, just my life and, and how I've been putting things off. I've put so much off. I haven't told you this, but ever since I was a kid, I mean literally like a little kid, I've wanted to be a writer. Always. Uh, my teachers always told me I was very um, good at it. That I was a good storyteller. That I was able to convey my words, you know, a lot better than the way I'm talking now. I, I'm, I, I'm a good writer, not a good speaker. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and I've gotten to the point now where it's been so long since I've been, since, since I've written anything, that I'm scared of, of trying to write again. I'm a perfectionist. I want things to be right. And I, you know, one of the things that, you know, a writer does is they rewrite, rewrite, rewrite. And it's a very necessary thing you have to do. And I understand that. And I get it. Uh, mentally, I get it. It's, it's important, but I am also a perfectionist, and I need to have it right the first time. And when I don't have it right the first time, and when it doesn't flow right, I get discouraged, and then I just give up. That's the way it's been for me for several years, and uh, I didn't used to be that way, but I don't know. I've just gotten that way uh, over the years, and now I'm afraid. I am, I am really, I mean, it's silly. It's absolutely silly. I am afraid to write. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm a fairly young guy yet, but at the same time, you know, I, these are my, th these years are my, I'm in, I'm supposedly supposed to be in my prime. And, and I've got nothing to show for it. Nothing. I mean, how would you feel if there was something that you want to do, but you don't do it because you're afraid to do it. I, I've, I've been talking to, to Susan Johnson, my therapist, about it, and she seems to think that I am doing this vlog because of that very thing. I'm trying to express myself um, in a way, in some way, shape, or form. And because I'm not doing it, you know, in a, uh, in a creative, written way, then. Um, I'm doing it through this. And I never really thought about that, but it kind of makes sense, I guess. I, 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 I love to read. I love to write. And not doing it, not being able to create something, I think that's at the core of the issue, being able to create something. Uh, last year this time, I had fancied myself some sort of a filmmaker. And I wanted to uh, get into film production and make my own little short movies and blah 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 and I, I actually went and <laughs> I bought a very expensive camera and I realized not long after I got it that I don't know any I, I'm completely completely out of my league way over my head don't need to be in that you know if I want to be a filmmaker I've got a camera right here I've got a nice camera on my phone I have two cameras on my phone actually crazy you know it's not the kind of camera that you need, that you have. It's the way you use it, right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I have all these little fancies. Like, you know, I want to do this. I want to be a filmmaker. I want to be a vlogger. I want to be a writer. I want to express myself. I want to put myself out there. I, I don't want to have to have these feelings bottled up inside. I get that. So maybe, maybe this is a form of therapy, man. You know, I never thought that. You guys can tell me. Um, I, I'd love to know 
you know, if, if you've ever had a similar situation where um, you just feel trapped, absolutely suffocated. I'm on the way home now. I will be uh, uploading this video uh, tonight. So I uh, appreciate you watching this video. I don't think I'll be filming anymore today. I appreciate you watching this video. I know it's probably long, probably boring, and I'm sorry. But uh, if you did make it through, I appreciate you watching. Please uh, comment and uh, give me a like if you haven't. Subscribe it uh, to the channel if you'd like, um, and let me know. L let me know what your thought. Let let me know your thoughts on this big cacophony of bullshit. That's my thought life. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, hang on, I have to, this was my knees. I mean, until next time, adios.